Hey everybody, welcome back to the underground lair. Got my space heater on because it's about 30 degrees down here. Now nah, it's probably about 60, but you know how it is in the winter. Anyhow, doggos upstairs going nuts. And on the bench we have a Yamaha F700S made in China. These have a um, Sitka spruce top on them and NATO sides back and neck which is similar to mahogany. Um, lady told me she got this for $60 online and that's a steal. These are one of the best starting guitars that you can get your hands on. Um, I mean with a spruce top it's amazing so um, she said that the, the action's a little high and she doesn't like the strings on here there's a little bit of sharp fret ends going on here not much but we'll clean that up for her um, looks like we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to shave the saddle a little bit but before we do all that, let's see where the actual string height is. It looks pretty high. So. Okay, I think I could drive a 18-wheeler under there. Yeah, that's uh, eight thousands or er, eight sixty-four string height and seven sixty-four string height. Way too high. But let's check the relief which I think might be we want to do twelve thousandths of relief pull down at the body joint go to the seventh fret and actually I wouldn't touch that and uh, I'd like to get the action down to Oops, cape was under. I'd like to get it down to 664 so if I can. It's at 864. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll take the strings off. We're going to jam it in the vise and sand the bottom off. Stand by. Mm -hmm. Second attempt. Let's see where we're at. We are at 664 and 464. Uh, we're going to clean up the fingerboard. We're going to polish the frets. And we're going to get rid of these. Um, I mean, they're really not sharp. They're enough to be, to me, to be annoying. But when I was playing it, feeling it because I guess I'm not getting close enough to that edge but you know you never use half your ass to do a job right no half assing here okay I just used, used the calipers on the old strings and they were um, 11 to 54 which is a, a strange um, string gauge but we're going with uh, 12 to 53's more balanced Diodarios so uh, let me get on that and do all the other things I said I was going to do I just wanted to make that note I figured I'd put this in the video while you're um, getting rid of your sharp fret ends um, you want to make sure you use masking tape here and this is a specialty file here that uh, Stumac sells. There are better files out there. 
but I bought this before I knew that. <laughs> I've got to invest in some Hosco files. Stumac has a habit of having other companies make stuff for them and they slap their name on it. You got here get out here to the open range tuners and they're you just roll over the top. And that little bit of stuff that you felt before is gone. So I just wanted to give you that little tip. I'll be back for more. All right, next up is clean the DNA and other junk off of the uh, fingerboard. I use Simple Green because it does not harm the wood and it is a great cleaner. It doesn't harm the finish. You use an old soft bristle toothbrush to get in there and just clean all that gunk up. No doubt some nicotine on that. Alrighty, we're going to go with our fine fret polisher in Europe they call them fret rubbers here we call them fret erasers because they look like the erasers that we grew up with as kids in school basically they're just a um, rubber that's made with a grit and you have different grits I believe this is a uh, 1200 grit and they span a couple of frets at a time up here in the uh, cowboy cord area and uh, you get down into the high fret area you can hit several at a time so nice and shiny frets for you. Now we're going to use some of, uh, let's see is there any left in this bottle? Yeah there is. Some F1 fingerboard conditioner and this looks pretty thirsty so we're going to give it plenty. Once again we're not going to let it marinate Put it on, wipe it on, and then wipe it off. back here because we got the chunk on there spilled over all right I ah, forgot we're gonna put some of that F1 on the bridge as well pull the saddle back out out. And this F1 stuff does tend to leach a little bit after you put it on, so you wipe it down another time before you put your uh, strings back on it. basically lubricating and protecting the wood. Not lubricating, but conditioning. That's the word. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and throw strings on here and tune it up and see what we got because it's a different gauge. We may have to adjust the truss rod. Okay, I just used, used the calipers on the old strings and they were um, 11 to 54, which is a, a strange um, string gauge, but we're going with uh, 12 to 53s, more balanced. Diodarios. So uh, let me get on that and do all the other things I said I was going to do. I just wanted to make that note. Okay, so I told her that I would uh, show her how to put strings on the guitar. And what I do is I turn the tuning machine so that the holes are at facing. I'd say 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock and I take the string, put it through the 2 o'clock position, bring it back, I hold my um, palm at the, hold my t palm at the 12th fret and then I, that, that gives me the right of number right number of winds and then I make kind of a Z as you can see there. You got your uh, lubrication in there. You take your winder, be it a power winder or one of these guys. tighten it down you want the string to go under the wind above it. And all you really need is about two to three winds on the wound, wound strings. put these up like so just because they're then they're out of the way okay so when you're doing the unwound string is you want you need more wraps because there's nothing like the winds to um, grab onto so you do need more winds and I add my thumb and I do not pull it as tight we do the same thing like I told you. We do the Z. That kind of locks the string in place. So I'll tilt this up so you can see that. On the B string, it's coming in and maybe that'll look better. Yeah. So once again. And make sure that you wrap it underneath each wind. And you want at least four winds here. Um, I thought this was a, a tusk nut in here, but it's plastic. So my use of the pencil really didn't do it. So I had to get out the guitar grease, which is a graphite paste that stays in place. And now things are much better. So what do we have? Let's measure our neck relief since we changed string gauges and it's been a while we want to see hold it the uh, first fret hold it the uh, body joint and then go at the seventh fret with 12 thousandths feeler gauge 
and we need to release the truss rod. So lefty loosey. That should do what we need it to do. Bring it back up to 10 because it'll, yeah, everything went flat. Alright. Let's take a look at that relief now. It should be right on spot. Even though we weren't getting any fret buzz, as soon as this thing sees different humidity, it will become unplayable, I believe. Okay, we got it to where I think we want our truss rod. Let's double check this. And my 12 thou. It just slips right in there. It's probably sitting at about 11 because the 10 doesn't move at all. and 564 right where Yamaha wants us so I'm going to clean this thing up call this done all right so we did probably a half turn on the truss rod which is pretty substantial so we're going to let this sit and acclimate and I'm going to come back later on and double check it just to make sure there's no fine tuning that needs done to it after it adjusts to having less pressure on the neck. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like us and subscribe on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. And if anybody in the greater Pittsburgh area needs their guitar worked on or axe sharpened, come and see us. We'll be glad to hook you up. Have a great day and Happy New Year!